Hi, there is a lot of fear today about jobs getting automated or the robots coming for your jobs, right? But is it really going to impact everyone, especially in the world of finance and accounting? Well, in today's video, we're going to discuss A, what is robotics or process automation or how is AI taking over the accounting and finance? And then B, what can you do to make sure that you are future proof? But before we do that, like always, thank you so much for all your love, affection, comments, likes. Honestly, I am super, super delighted that we are fast moving towards our 10,000 target as well. So thank you so much uh, for uh, being in this journey with me. Um, so if you are someone who's come to this channel for the first time, can I request you to please hit the like button, do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and i promise you one thing i'll only make videos that's going to help you in your overall finance accounting and commerce journey and then of course a lot of acca as well right because i did promise and i did make a resolution at the start of this year that i will now start making videos that impact a much larger students professional base from the commerce field right so this video is uh, one of those because what I'm going to talk about today is not going to just impact anyone who's doing ACCA but impacts anyone and everyone from the finance and accounting domain, right? So the topic, are the robots coming? Yes, the robots are being implemented in every organization, whether it is a large, whether it is a medium and a lot of small organizations as well. So anyone who thinks, oh, I'm working in a small company and these guys are never going to spend money to automate things. My friend, you are wrong because as you know, we progress towards more efficient and effective way of or economical way of developing these uh, softwares and robots, uh, even the smaller businesses are going to implement them, right? So it's not going to be only a large organization that's going to do it. Every single company out there is going to do it. And why not? I'll tell you. Because I, I have worked in past uh, in organizations who have you know done these implementations. I can tell you there is so much, so much benefit. You are able to do much, much, much larger volumes or amount of work with less than half, sometimes even a quarter or even less than that of a workforce, right? Another big advantage is that you can scale. You can scale like no tomorrow. So if you have to, let's say you're working on 10 clients and tomorrow 10 more clients comes in, you'll say, oh, no, no, let me, you know, let me hire people now. Let me train them. But let's say if you have a software that you've already trained them on how to calculate, let's say GST or how to file a return, GST return, then they can do 100, 200, 500,000 returns. Absolutely no problem. And again, I'm speaking with experience, right? So uh, there are multiple benefits and we'll talk about those as well in a bit, right? But first of all, what is the robotics or the process automation that uh, is really being spoken about today? First of all, there's no physical robots that are being, you know, that are, are not, not walking in the offices, right? So anyone who thinks, especially my young friends, you know, must be thinking, oh, you know, there is someone like Chitty, right? Uh, from, the, from the robot movie who's at uh, workplace. No, it's not the case, right? You have... All these softwares that are implemented that uh, replace humans. Now, when I say humans, you know, what is happening is that there were and I'm sure there are still a lot of companies where there are jobs that are very tedious, very repetitive, but still very straightforward and does not require someone to be super duper smart or super duper skilled to do them. Right. Like, for example, downloading reports, maybe formatting the reports, maybe filling in very simple data, looking at an invoice, putting it in the system or looking at a data and then approving something, right? There are tons and tons of uh, uh, organization that have these processes which require huge number of people, right? Uh, and I've worked in such companies before, right? Where there are teams in hundreds, right? For accounts payable, receivable, etc., right? So now what happens is that the organization, if they have all of these processes which are being done manually by people, there's always a possibility that you can make an error. There's always a possibility that people are sick and they don't want to come to work. There's always a possibility there are some, some natural disasters and people can't come to work. There's always a possibility people are not happy at work and they don't want to work. Right? So there are so many problems that can come when humans work. So what software does 
is that a company will bring in a software that can actually replicate the human um, while doing all of these very simple and straightforward activities. So it is very much possible that before you needed someone to look at an invoice, right? And then in your ERP system or a software like Tally, for example, you will input the details and make the payment, etc. But now there could be a software, you know, which will use OCR or optical character recognition software. It can look at the invoice, right? It can capture the data. It can input all of that data in the system. It can send that invoice to the people who should be approving it and then automatically also making or sending it for a payment at least, right? So there were a lot of people before that were involved in this very simple process. So now the software has completely replaced that cycle, right? So these are the kind of jobs that are getting replicated, not the ones where you required a lot of technical knowledge. For example, if there is a, let's say for example, you don't know how much GST needs to be claimed or do you need to pay any GST? Or if this is the kind of customer, how do you, uh, let's say, uh, if it's a foreign customer, what do you do with monies that's come through? Or there could be any of these anomalies, right? Which requires, uh, you know, brains to fix, right? Those jobs are not getting automated, at least as of now, right? Because the organizations are now, right now, focusing on jobs which can be very easily automated, at least the repetitive ones which are done 10, 50, 100 times a day, uh, which are not adding a lot of value to the to the process, right? So now these jobs, by the way, in finance, because you know we are talking about finance and accounting, these are there in accounts payable. And I give you an example that the whole accounts payable flow can be automated. The same is the case with accounts receivable. There is a very good chance that a software can send reminders to people to make the payment. And I'm sure if you if you're using credit cards and, and, and mobile phones, you can you can see that you get automated reminders, right? There is also a software that can actually download a bank statement, look at what those monies have come from, match it against the customer's outstanding invoices and apply it to the accounts as well. I've uh, in past worked with organizations that were using these softwares that could automate all of these cash that comes in on a daily basis in a bank, right? So your accounts receivable is getting automated. There are a lot of organizations that are using softwares to uh, do reconciliations automatically. It's happening on a daily basis, right? And believe you me, uh, as an accountant, you will see that in the industry, tons and tons of reconciliations takes place, right? So, so it is one of the core activity as an accountant you would do. But now those are also getting automated. But again, I want to remind you that these are these are reconciliations that did not require too much brains. You're downloading a report, you're looking at debit over there, you're looking at an invoice and you're just marking and matching them off, right? So I don't want to, because look, I take these seminars at colleges and I do lots of seminars across the country on robotics and process automation and how it's impacting finance and accounting, right? Uh, but I don't want to keep this video very, very long. All I want to tell you, is that robots are definitely coming for the jobs which are non-technical, does not require a lot of skill, does not add any value to the organization. There is always a chance of making errors, right? Jobs where you require scaling up very quickly, right? All of these jobs are going to get automated. Today, tomorrow, five years, 10 years, but it is going to happen. There is no two ways about it, right? So what you can do, what you can do is that A, Whenever you join an organization, remember that go with not accepting status quo as one of the key attitude of yours. What do I mean by that? That if let's say something is being done in a certain manner, always challenge and see how you can make it better. Because if you're going to just do what all your predecessors were doing 10 years, five years ago, then you're not adding any value, right? So do that. And secondly, make sure that you have all the skills that can help you understand, you know, decipher the process and make it more leaner, reduce the waste that is there in the process, make it more efficient, make it more effective, make it more economical, right? We, we understand these things when we, when we learn the concept of value for money, right? Make sure that when you start any job, do not just sit there and 
oh you know i've been trained in this manner so i'll only do it this way no because at the end of the year when you go for an appraisal right your boss is going to tell you that you are only doing what you were supposed to do that you've not done anything over and above then why do you expect me to give an increment over and above that is where you guys get stuck right so my point is if you are a student if you are a working professional right remember that the jobs are going to get automated but you should acquire skills now how do you acquire these skills first of all make sure that you have a fairly decent qualification for example you can do something like an acca or a cma or a cfa or cfp or investment banking or a chartered accountancy or an mba from a good college my point is that have a a decent qualification that works like an insurance for you right because you you need those that knowledge to be able to uh, do you know do whatever you know uh, analysis at work or process improvements because if you do not understand let's say accounting standards really well how do you in the world automate a lease uh, reconciliation or a lease uh, amortization table or something like that right you need to know these standards only then you can add value over there so make sure that you have a good qualification like these and then b also try and upskill yourself by learning some of the tech skills it could be for you can do sql you can do power bi or tableau or you can you know learn some coding from python right don't just just because you're a finance and accounting professional you not learn any tech right make sure that you are at least aware of what these or uh, what are the possibilities from these tech uh, apps etc right so look i hope the message is loud and clear that if you are going to go after low hanging non value add jobs right uh, they are going to get automated right if you want to stay relevant make sure you're highly skilled and you continue to uh, upskill yourself right so i hope that helps right if you still have any questions i will be more than happy to help and uh, all the very best thank you so much bye bye